Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to read a couple pages out of a book that I'm really enjoying. It's called The Cross in the Shadow of the Crescent. Um, it's a book about Christianity and Islam. It's written by a pastor, um, Erwin Lutzer. He's a pastor in Chicago. And I just really um, enjoyed this book. It's been informative and inspirational. Um, just a great look. And I just want to read like two, I think it's like two pages um, out of the book that I thought were pretty powerful. Um, so on page 93 is where I'm going to start. Trusting God no matter what happens. We who live in the West can be heartened by two facts. First, no matter what suffering might lie in our future, countless thousands of our brothers and sisters in Christ have endured much worse. Of these, untold numbers suffered faithfully, fulfilling God's will for their lives. And second, we must remember that when we are persecuted, we're still held firmly in the hands of God, not the hands of man. As Jesus said, no one can pluck us out of his hands, John 10 28 through 29. Therefore, we have no reason to fear the future. To ancient Israel, a nation well acquainted with bloody massacres, massive deportations, and lost wars, God gave this promise. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your land. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. That's in Isaiah 42, 6 through 7. Even as we are held in God's hands and we suffer, we are to be a witness to those who are in spiritual darkness. We're not to retreat in resignation or fear, but to step forward as bold witnesses who proclaim God's saving grace. Let us prove once and for all that we value Christ more than our own comforts or even life itself. No matter how bad things get, no matter whether it seems Satan has the upper hand, God is in control. And that we true, and that was true for the believers in the church at Smyrna. Be faithful even to the point of death, Jesus said to this church, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Revelation 2.10 That promise applied to Christians in ancient Smyrna and it still applies to us today. Even where we're seemingly thrown into the hands of the devil, we're still in the hands of God. And then he ends with a short story called The Triumph of the Cross, a personal testimony. Abdul grew up in northern Nigeria in a pious Muslim family. When he was still a young boy, his parents decided to hand him over to an imam who taught Abdul what Muslims believe and required him to learn the Quran by heart. In time, some Muslim leaders recognized that Abdul was a talented boy. So he, they gave him a special task. He was to visit Christian churches, then report everything back to his Muslim friends. He went as far as to tell one pastor he wanted to receive Christ, and he went to baptism classes and he got baptized. The church even asked him to preach. At this time, he was still a Muslim spy. One day, Abdul was invited to a special event by the youth group of his church. More than a thousand people attended the service. When an old man got up to preach, Abdul laughed quietly, figuring the sermon wouldn't be very good. The men began to teach about Elijah, then read, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If it is Baal, follow him. 1 Kings 18.21 Abdul was stunned. He felt as if the preacher was speaking to him alone. He wondered, Who told this man about me? At the end of the sermon, the preacher said, Make the right decision today. Stand up to show us that you have decided to follow Christ. Abdul found himself standing, and he was the only one in the crowd doing so. That was the day the Lord found Abdul. And it was also the day he began to experience persecution. 
His Muslim friends wanted to kill him. To save him, his church hid him in a small village. An elderly pastor cared for him and discipled him. Abdul later married the pastor's daughter, Mary, and together they dedicated their lives to winning Muslims for Christ. Their decision came with a high price. One day, more than a thousand Muslims surrounded the house in which Abdul and his family lived, wanting to kill them. Miraculously, the Lord spared the family. A few years later, Muslim fanatics brutally murdered Abdul and Mary's oldest son, all because the couple dared to testify about Christ to Muslims. Today, Abdul works in northern Nigeria as a missionary. He heads a group of about 35 farmer evangelists who work in a rural Islamic villages. The Islamist terrorist group Boko Haram threatens him regularly and is committed to wiping out Christianity in Nigeria. And yet Abdul continues to follow the Lord's call to minister to Muslims and reach them for Christ. This story was shared, it says, by one of Abdul's friends. Once again, this is the book. I'm still reading it. Um, I'm a little over halfway and it's just really powerful. And whether it's the coronavirus that's testing our faith, war, um, a battle within our own families, um, doubt, um, the word of Christ is true and it saves souls and God loves us and he will triumph over Satan. No matter what, we have nothing to fear as it says in Philippians 1.21. And um, I just wanted to encourage um, those of you listening in our church body um, with that message. And uh, God bless.